I'm Captain Eddie Castlewood. Look at that. Look. Got my smock over my brand new shirt. That's red. Mama said it looked good in red. Don't know why she would say that. But hey, I want to show you a little something about wood turning, and I'd like you to do one thing. You know the thing. You gotta watch. Hey, the other day we sat down and we, we shaped a little wood and, and did a little sanding and all. And in a minute, I want to pull up the white, the white draw, the white board and show you something about sanding. I want to do the C A finish and show you the nuts and bolts of the C A and why it's not working for you sometimes, and sometimes it works really well for you. And sometimes I got a problem, you got a problem, we all got a problem. All right, I want to show you that it's all got to. All of it has to do with the atmosphere. Now, my shop is outside. It's wet. That floor is wet. That floor is wet. That floor is wet. It's got humidity problem. Termites ate the place alive while I was sick for four years. I mean, just ate stuff I didn't believe they'd ever eat. They got in and they just had a field day. And it's probably going to fall down, but that's okay. We'll live with it. But that humidity makes a big difference in how we get the finish done. So with all the humidity, and we got a hurricane coming. This ain't June, this is May. And there's a hurricane coming in on us. We hit a thunder in a few minutes. Um, but when we do this, the humidity will impact, the humidity in the area will impact the finish. Now I turned the air conditioner on, I had it on for about two days now. And it's taking a lot of moisture out, not a, not a, not a lot of it. And I do feel a little chilly in here right now, so it is working because it's bringing the humidity down and making the place more stable. I don't think I'm going to fool around with the CA finish today. I want to show you a little something that I believe about sanding, and I want you to look at it, listen to it, and follow along, and see if you can get onto the same plane as I am with sanding. Oh, that I mentioned, coming up in August, the last weekend of August, 24, 25, 26 is SWAT in Waco, Texas. My personal opinion, it's the funnest wood turning symposium ever in the world. Why? It's put on by clubs, not a company, not a corporation. It doesn't have a goal to, 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 to do any more than teach you about wood turning and have a good time. And they bring in some great demonstrators. I might not have said this too many times, but Ashley Harwood's going to be there. Very pleasant good-looking, talented wood turner who will show you what to do. But I don't want you to sit, sit there and watch the vase or the jar or the bowl or whatever Ashley's turning. I want you to sit there and watch Ashley turn. Yeah, when she picks up the gouge and presents it to the piece. Watch how she presents it. Watch what angle it attacks. Watch how it rides the bevel. Watch how she cues in. There's no choo 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 that doesn't happen. She understands how to cut the wood. She learned it from some of the best, and she's expounding on that and showing it to you. So when you go to SWAT, and you want to, you know, how do you do that here? Here's the email. At, I mean, the website, SWATTurners.org. You're gonna have all about it. They got the roster up right now. I mean, Jim Creel leads off. Cindy Droz is in the first day. Ashley's in the first day. There's gonna be a competition first night. Uh, the, the food is awesome. And this is the symposiums that you don't pay $13 for a hot dog and a Coke. This is the one where you don't do that. Why? Because it's it's a meal. It's provided. It's great. It's awesome. It's family. It's the family get-together that you like to go to. Really, that's coming up. And what else is coming up this Monday, May 28, 2018, is the annual celebration, or this year's celebration, of Memorial Day. Now, you know, I'm going to take a second here. It's not a celebration of Memorial Day. You can't celebrate Memorial Day. Okay, that's, what you do is you remember Memorial Day. You, you take time to thank those who have given some or all of their freedom, their life, their normality, and I, I, I say that, and served in the military of the United States. 
These people protected our way of life, protected the land we live on, kept us from other invading forces, kept the rest of the world from attacking us in other ways. It didn't all happen in 2001. It didn't all happen with uh, uh, Pearl Harbor or Korea or any of the other wars. It happened at all of them. All these events combined. So when you think about Memorial Day, do me one favor. Think about the people that gave up their all, gave up more than you and I would have thought about giving up. I served. I spent more than four years in the military. I enjoyed it. Yeah. And I know a lot of young people that did. But this year, Memorial Day, just close your eyes and thank God that we have what we have in America. It is really, really worth it. Let me get the wipe dry up. Okay, bear with me as we try to do this because I want to explain it to you. Got the wipe dry out. It's not the cleanest in the world. It's the one I found in the trash can. Let's put on, um, put a board up here. Just anything. Okay. So we have a piece that we have between centers. Okay. You got that? I got to back up and see if we got it. Yeah, we got it. Okay. Now, if I were to take strip sandpaper and sand this piece, just like that, and they sell this paper in a dozen catalog services and at the local hardware store, but I sand it like that, let's take the microscope now and look really close at that area right there. Okay? Now, when you look in there, what you're going to see is the board, a bump, a bump, a bump, a bump, a bump, just like that. Now, that's the nature of what happens when you take a strip of paper that's got rocks embedded in it, and you push it down on a piece that's spinning. These rocks give those impressions. Now, I might be exaggerating a little bit, but just a little bit, all right? But that's what happens. Now, I want to get rid of these bumps. And how can I do it? Well, I can stop the lathe and go side to side to side. That, that's okay. But there's a better way, or I believe there's a better way, and I want you to take a look at this. I want to use a uh, a self-powered sanding pad. Self-powered means I don't have to have a drill motor. I don't have to have a uh, air chuck. I don't have to have any of that. I've got this little vise, and I made it in a shop. They use the bushing and the bearing and a pad from Vince Welch and his sandpaper. And this is a paper I'm going to place on this piece right here, and I'm going to go across it just like that. And you see the, the pad? Can you see the pad moving? All right. I got a sharpie. I got a marker here. I can do this. You see the pad moving? That's called high-end graphics, folks. Yeah, you can't do this without a Mac. All right. But I'm going to take that same paper and sand this area. Now, what is that going to do? Eh, a little bit different. Instead of, I've got the same wood right here. But instead of putting grooves in it, I'm going to cut it oscillating. It means not just rotational, but moving. And I'm going to take and sand it this direction, which is with the wood as across the top. And then I'm going to sand it in this direction, and this direction, all at one time. So I'm going to go, here's, here's the beauty of this. This also comes with sound effects. Did you get the sound effects? That costs a lot of money to do. All right, this became a much more efficient way to sand. Why and how? 
I know it. I knew you were going to ask. The why and how is sandpaper is just that. It is a piece of paper with sand on it. If you use using strip paper, they're going to be lined up and they're going to strap it. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. You can buy all these kits and boxes, and I've probably got a dozen of them around here someplace, of strips and cuts and blocks and molds and all that. Because I had to keep playing with it as I was learning how to turn, and when I played with it, I found out that the best sanding I got was the simplest. And it was using that the little pad, little hand swipe pad, uh, self-powered. Now, it cut across, down, and down. All in one move with the right pad and the right backing. And it did it well, and it did it under power at about four or 500 RPMs. Don't get nervous if you don't have a big fancy lathe. Um, you can do it on a 1014 by jet. You can do it on the bargain blocks from home Harbor Freight. Anybody, anybody like that. You can do it on all of them because they all turn wood. What you need is it for turning wood. And here's the other thing. It's shocker. All right, new guys. <clears throat> sanding slower is better than sanding faster. Yep. Ain't like your daddy told you. It ain't how fast you go. It's how well you do it. All right. If you sand with the rotary sander, number one, it's easy. Oh, i got to reach around to get to this thing here. The change pads. Strip off one and apply another. Just that simple. Or I can go high tech and get me a couple of these pad inserts and just change the inserts. But that's the beauty of Velcro. I swear it would turn a creative Velcro. He had to. Um, but you get this, you change the pads, you start at 80, you work up to 320 or 400. You will be shocked at how well your piece sanded out. I'm from a bottle stopper to an ink pen to a, um, a, a jar, a bottle, a vase, a, a, the hundreds and hundreds of items that we get in here, photographs of every month. Uh, this is all can be sanded with this simple device. Now this simple device can also work straight in so you get to the bottom of a bowl or go around the outside one with less hand effort and all that. And trust me, you want less hand effort because of your age. Your age is close to my age or over, and you want it, you want things to be simpler and easier on your body. So, this works for me. Now I get my pads, the backup pads, which is soft sheets, pieces that go between them. They're a foam thing, and you can't see because it doesn't unwrap it. I get all that from Vince's Wooden Wonders. Yeah, Vince, Vinny. Don't call him Vinny. Okay, do call him Vinny. Um. But that's how I sand. Now, you're going to tell me, but sanding this way is going to leave some marks. Sanding this way leaves some marks. Sanding this way even more leaves more marks. More marks. More marks. More marks. If you follow along with me, it's simpler. So I'm not telling you to throw away your strip paper. I'm telling you to augment it with a disc. Augment your disc from 80 to 400. And then if you think you need to polish this lumber or plastic or whatever before you then you can step up to the to the abrasive pads and discs and slicks and sleets and all that stuff and buff it all out. You can do that with it stopped. That's nice. But keep this in mind, wood turners. The quality of the work you're going to see is the work you put in. This is not Moses saying we can cross the water. This is Eddie saying, if you get to the other side, you want to be ready. So we're going to cross this piece from sanding to putting the finish on. To get to where we want to put a finish on, we want to sand it right. If you get to, to where you get the piece all dressed up and you still see marks, you're not sanding it right. So that's when you got to fix it. A guy sent me a picture the other day of a bowl he turned, and it's got some tear outs. Uh, let me see. I think I, I can put that up right here. You see those marks? Those are tear-outs. Yeah, yeah, those are tear-outs. 
I'm not going to tell you who did it uh, or, or, or what, but he says, I'm sure I had my tool sharp and all this. We talked about tool presentation, watching Ashley on how she presents that tool, because if that tool doesn't slice, it just grabs and tears it out. And that's what happened here. It was very soft, punky wood. It grabbed it and tore it out. So in this case, this guy's tools needed to be extremely sharp, extremely handled, handled oh man, why am I getting befuddled here? It's got to be handled just right to where you take that gouge and you roll it way up on the side and you go in, and I'm going to make me a big gouge and show you how to roll that thing in and make that slice cut. And slice cut little ribbons are going to come off. When you get the little ribbons coming off on your hands, you're making a slice cut. I know it sounds silly, but it, 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 it might sound like a story. But I'm not the old man without a mind down on the corner. Well, maybe I am. But here's the deal. If you can cut it better, you can sand it better. You can sand it better, you can finish it better. If you can finish it better, all the other guys are going to talk about you. Yeah, and it's not going to be good. They're going to say, how in the hell did he do that? That's what I like to hear. How in the hell did he do that? So if you want to learn how to do more of that, this is the place to be. I'll try to teach you. Do my best, and I hope you do your best. You're the best wood turners in the world. Send me photographs of your work. I'll use them. Where to send them? To this address. Eddie Cat at a gas at gmail.com. I can't even say my own address. Uh, I hear the thunder. I know it rain's coming. I'm going to get ready. Once you get ready, get on out in the shop and make some shavings. That's it. <laughs> Take care. Be good.